Hi everyone, welcome to today's vlog. Um, I'm here in Congsbury Church and uh, we're going to continue looking at these parables that Jesus told, particularly those about the master and the servant or the master and the slave, because he, use, he seems to use these quite often. And today's parable is in many ways completely upside down and opposite to the one we looked at last Friday. Last Friday we looked at Luke chapter 12 and how the master, when he came home late at night from a wedding banquet, put an apron around his waist and then waited at table and served the servants, something which would have been unheard of in Jesus's day. And yet we looked at a modern understanding of that with regard to communion, how Jesus waits on each of us in the form of a little piece of, piece of bread and a sip of wine. But today's parable, I'm just going to read it for you, as I say, is the complete opposite to that. And who among you, said Jesus, with a slave who has been ploughing or looking after sheep when he comes back from the field, says to him, come here right away and sit down at the table. Wouldn't you rather say, prepare what I will eat and gird your loins to serve me while I eat and drink? And after this, you can eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what he was ordered to do? Well, in the same way you, when you have done everything ordered for you to do, well, you will say, we are just slaves and we have done what we were told to do. Now, this parable can be really misunderstood from Luke chapter 17. It can make it sound as though here God is, is sort of going back to the old understanding of master and servant or slave. But as I look at this list of all the vicars on this board behind me, it goes all the way back to 1228, the very first vicar of Kongsbury. We don't know that much about any of these characters except their name. We hope that they were able to be faithful to the gospel and to share God's love in their generation as we're trying to do in ours. And of course, the vicar was just one person. Um, the congregation may have been small, it may have been large, but however we understand it, there were tens if not even a hundred thousand people who've been part of the life of this church and the same obviously also in Banwell over the years and their names have not been recorded necessarily but they too showed acts of love and acts of kindness they said they shared their prayer times they came to worship they read their scriptures they sought to allow God into their hearts and into their lives and show love to the world and enable God's kingdom to come some will have been more successful in this than others may be some may have found it really, really tough. But the reality is everybody who's been part of the life of these churches and is part of the life of the church today is trying simply to do it because we found this deep love of Jesus, this deep love of God and the joy of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We don't do it to be thanked necessarily by God. He will thank us, by the way. But we don't do it for that reason, a bit like we don't show a loved one or a child the, the love just because we want to be thanked for it. We do it, we show love to them because, well, that's what we feel called to do, because we've discovered their love in us. So here's the thing. In 1226, two years before this board started, a humble little Franciscan friar called Francis of Assisi died, died at a very young age actually, just uh, he didn't even see his 40th birthday. Some of his closing remarks have always stayed with me. He turned to one of his brothers who asked him, you know, could he pass on any words of wisdom as he lay on his deathbed? He simply turned to his brother and he said, God has taught me my duty. May he teach you yours. Now Francis of Assisi was able to inspire and encourage quite literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people to discover the love of Jesus in his lifetime and in the years following. But he didn't see it as look at me like some great celebrity. He felt he was simply always looking forward to the love of Jesus and recognising the love that Jesus had both for him and the world. It became so natural to who he was and people could see it. 
in his integrity, could see it in his life and in his love and devotion to Jesus. And maybe that is what we're called to do. We, we're not all gonna be Francis of Assisi. Some of us may be successful in what we do, some of us may not. Some of us may um, seem to be in the limelight or up the front, some of us may not. I think of all the people who have cleaned this church. I think of all the people who have um, put the rubbish out every every week. I think of all the people who have cut the grass. I think of all the people who arrange the flowers and do any act of kindness, not just in the church, but in the wider community. We do it for love and we do it because we realize that God is love. So wherever you find you fit into this story, may you know that you will be thanked, but we do it not for the thanks, we do it for love. And that's the point of this parable. Have a good rest of the day. God bless.